Hello, my name is Brian and welcome to Overland Calling. I spent over 75 days traveling coast to coast across America. That entire time, I was working from the road, camping remotely, and getting as far off grid as I could. I learned a lot of lessons about the Starlink Mini the hard way. And in this video, I'm going to try and share everything I know on the Starlink Mini. There's going to be chapter markers on all these sections, so if you miss anything, you can go back and check it out. And if anybody's got their own tips and tricks that I don't cover or any questions that I don't answer, hey, let me know in the comments. All right, we got a lot of info to cover, so let's get moving. First item on our list is going to be the different data plans that Starlink has. Now, by the time I publish this video, those plans could be out of date. So here's my advice. Go directly to the Starlink.com website and check the plans out in detail because that's going to give you the most up-to-date information. They change these plans around all the time. Here's another helpful hint. If you get the wrong plan and decide you want to change, you're not locked into anything. You can alter your plan and switch to another one and all that good stuff without being locked in on any long-term contracts. All right, let's take a peek at the website and see what Starlink's got going on. We got the residential in Rome. Obviously, I'm going the Rome route. Learn more, starting at $50 a month. We got a video you can watch on it. Rome 50 gig plan. Let's look at the view plan details. Countrywide coverage, in motion use, international travel. I bet there's a time limit on how many days you can spend international though. Coastal coverage and the ability to pause service. And so for the Rome 50 gig plan, $50 a month. If you go over 50 gigs, it's $1 per gigabyte that you go over. And the Rome Unlimited for $165 a month. Then if you look on the fine print and the FAQ, you've got all the different details on the plan. In motion use up to 100 miles an hour. Um, yeah, I own a Jeep. I'm not going to have to worry about that. You've got the ability to pause and unpause service at any time. Billing is in one month increments. So if you turn it on, you get billed 50 bucks. If you turn it off before your billing cycle then cycles over, then you don't have to pay for that next month. But if you turn it on and off, you're still looking at paying for that entire month. Hope that makes sense. It's not day for day. It's month by month, according to your billing date. Coastal coverage, 12 nautical miles off the coast and a whole bunch of other details. And just go through this in detail and read the stuff. If there are any questions you have, that's when you hit up the internet. But don't hit up the internet before you go and look and see what current Starlink plans they have going on. All right, done. Aha. I told you there's a lot of stuff, I made a list. So while we're talking about data, if you've only got 50 gigs, you might want to save as much as you can. Here's some tips and tricks on that. You can set your Starlink Mini Wi-Fi connection to low data mode. That turns off things like auto update, uh, photo and video sync to the cloud. And don't forget to take care of all your system and app updates before you, you know, hit your travel. That way you have to update as little as possible. If you watch YouTube, hey, turn autoplay off. That way, just in case you fall asleep, then it doesn't automatically move on to the next video. Speaking of watching YouTube videos, you don't have to watch them in 4K. You can change and do your video settings, you know, all the way down to even 780p is not bad quality. It's not going to be as nice as 4K. Nope, absolutely not. But it's going to use a heck of a lot less data. You can also set up your sleep schedule for the Starlink Mini. Not only does this turn it off, save power, um, and of course save data because it's not transmitting any data while it's in sleep mode, but it allows you to be able to kind of unplug and enjoy camping in the great outdoors. You'll find this by going into your Starlink app, settings, Starlink, sleep schedule, set the times to sleep and wake up. And don't forget, you're not tied into it. You can change these around anytime you want to, and you can wake it up. So this next one's the hardest one for me. I'm out enjoying the great outdoors, but I'm not because you know what I got? I'm, I'm in front of some beautiful scenic view and I'm staring at my phone, watching, you know, videos, surfing the web, reading emails, whatever. So this next tip will save you the most data of anything possible and will probably help you enjoy camping in the great outdoors better. Put your phone 
doubt. Be present in your now and enjoy the liberation of being disconnected. One of my favorite things about being on the 50 gig a month plan is that after I've used that all up, I know it costs me more money for more data. And that helps me pull the plug and really enjoy life at camp. Before I forget, if you like this sort of content and find it helpful, I'd appreciate it if you toss me a like. Hey, even think about subscribing. I have a mix of content dealing with working from the road, overlanding, off-roading, and of course Starlink and the various tech needed to stay connected while in remote places. I title all my videos clearly so you can see what they're about. So choose notifications to decide if it's something that interests you. Okay. Let's move on to Starlink Mini Performance. So speed test is an okay way to be able to get a quick snip of time and see how it's performing just when you're running the speed test. But what I found most useful was going into statistics because that's where you can see over a longer period of time if you've got any drops or anything like that that's gonna cause you problems, especially if you're doing Teams meetings or video conference calls or Wi-Fi calling. Also, a lot of times the Starlink will work just fine no matter what orientation it's in. But if you go into the app and you align it properly, that's gonna give you the absolute best results. Alignment with the app is pretty easy. All you gotta do is follow the picture. Then you can adjust tilt and the orientation it's in. Just match it up and it'll tell you when you're on target. Now in the United States, it almost always wanted to face north, except when I was on the east and the west coast, then it wanted to face over the ocean. So keep that in mind whenever you're picking your camp and stuff like that. Obstructions matter. Things like trees, rocks, mountains, you name it. Um, if it's getting in the way of a satellite passing overhead, that's an obstruction. Try and give it an open view of the sky. You could also use the app to create an obstruction map. All you have to do is point your phone or iPad up in the sky and then move it around and it'll map out any obstructions that might be in the area. It will actually populate automatically as well, but it does take it quite a bit of time to create that map. All right, now for mobile performance. It works really well for driving navigation apps. Pretty darn good for online music. You can even watch videos. Both online music and videos buffer. So if you do get a drop or something like that, it'll work off internal memory until it picks up signal again. Now for Wi-Fi calling, it did have some issues when I was out there, especially if I was in tree cover. But if I was in open skies and relatively level ground, I know hardly ever when you're off-roading, but you know, sometimes it happens. It worked great. I didn't get any drops or anything like that, even change in direction. Here's a quick tip for Wi-Fi calling. Your phone probably won't be defaulted to have Wi-Fi calling on. So you're gonna need to go into it and then go into settings, cellular, scroll till you see Wi-Fi calling, select that, and then turn it on. Dash you to enable, hit yes. You can even set it to prefer Wi-Fi when you're roaming. Sorry, Android users. I don't know exactly how to go and do it, but I know you have the option as well. Overall, the Starlink Mini worked great while I was out on the road. I handled email, download, upload, video meetings like Teams, I don't have 75 days of vacation and the mini was critical for me being able to get out, do what I love and take a nice long road trip and not have to worry about getting back to go to work. I could, I work remote so I could take work with me. All I need is a digital connection. All right, next up, we've got mounting. Mounting for me had two different types. First one I'll go through is in motion. There are tons of different in motion mounts out there. Sorry, I can't be a whole lot of help on that because I just strapped my mini to my center panel in my Jeep with a homemade solution. It works fine for soft tops and even works through fiberglass roofs and sunroofs. It will not go through metal though, so heads up there. I made sure I could easily remove it from my in-motion mount and align it when I was at camp because the connection is much more stable when aligned. There's a full video on this homemade DIY setup in my Starlink Mini video playlist if you want to go check that out. Now, next up, how about at camp? It comes with a kickstand and you can use that to sit it on horizontal surfaces. For safety and less obstructions, I chose to mount it on my rooftop tent. That way it was safe from theft, getting run over or stepped on. It worked great. There's a full video showing how I mounted it to my rooftop tent. You guessed it in my Starlink playlist. If I parked under trees, 
I would just run it out of the way of my vehicle for the best view of the sky, and then I'd set it on a small camp table. There are way too many different options out there to go through each and every one. Just pick what works best for you based on your setup. No one solution worked in every situation and having the ability to switch between multiple setups was priceless. One thing to keep in mind with any mounting solution is how you're gonna be able to power your setup. You guessed it, power is the next thing we're gonna be looking at. Again, there are a ton of options out there for powering your Starlink Mini. It was a bit overwhelming at first, but once I got the hang of it, having all the different choices just made things super easy. Now, Starlink Mini uses about 20 to 25 watts, and I love that low power draw. I know what you're asking, how do I power my Starlink Mini? Is it USB-C, an adapter from 12 volt to USB-C, a straight plug into 12 volt, or a boost converter, even the AC wall outlet? Simple. I use them all. It just depends on the situation and what I've got handy. Okay, moving on. No, I'm just kidding. We'll spend a little time here. I'll show you some of the different options in detail. Each one of these has its own pros and cons. So you can just take a look at your situation and pick the one that works best for you. If you want to take a deep dive into any of these different options, there's videos in my Starlink mini playlist, but here's a quick down and dirty version. I used to have cords for every type of plug, but I found this three in one cord and now this is pretty much what I use for everything. So for USB-C, it needs to be 100 watts PD, that stands for power delivery, and you need it to be able to deliver 20 volts, five amps. Oh, and if you're wondering how long that cord can be using a USB-C, I used my five foot adapter cord and the standard cable plugged it in and it went over 55 feet. I like this method because it's simple and my power stations already have the USB-C PD plugs. The downside is that I don't have a good way to waterproof things at the power connection points. Next up, the 12 volt USB-C cigarette lighter adapter. When I first got my Mini, this is the option I used for power so that it could draw the power from my vehicle and not my battery while I was driving. And all this does is it converts that 12 volt that you plug into your car and has a USB-C PD power out setting. This also comes in really handy if you've got older power stations that don't have that PD capability that it requires. Pro, super versatile. I could use it in power stations, I could use it in my car. Con, it does tend to warm up a little bit. So if you're in a really hot environment or you got the heat on in your car, or if you leave it setting in your car and the window's up and it's baking, you're gonna see power cycles. Next up, we got the standard 12 volt plug. Since I got this new three in one cord, I use this pretty much for everything when I'm driving, just to go direct and plug it right into the car and keep things simple. The downside is 12 volt power doesn't work over long distances. That voltage will drop as it goes further and further out. I couldn't use it with my Starlink mini 50 foot cord that came with it. I was limited to about 10 feet. Next up, we got a boost converter. I got one of these off Amazon and I wired it into my battery power system. A boost converter is what I use when I'm at camp most of the time. Just because it's simple, it's easy, and it's already routed into my battery system and it's waterproof. Heck, on this last trip, I used it 90% of the time. I just routed the cord into my car through the door when I was, you know, driving around and stuff like that. All right, last but most certainly not least, the AC wall outlet version. This is the cheapest option because the AC adapter and the 50 foot cord already come with your Starlink Mini. You don't have to pay anything extra. The downside is my inverters use about seven watts power just themselves being on to convert that voltage. So that would put the Starlink Mini drawing 27 to 32 watts instead of my 20 to 25 watts that I'd see without it. There is no one single perfect option that I found that worked in every situation I needed it for. I loved having the versatility and sometimes I used whatever route was you know, most convenient for me and my power source. So take a look at your setup and pick what's right for you. Before I hop into the final section, hey, do me a favor, hit that like button if you're enjoying this content. All right, let's hop into how does the dang thing work in different environments? Things like rain, cold temps, hot temps, you name it. Let's hop into it. Rain wasn't a big problem for me unless there was a big storm rolling through. It would cut out sometimes, but not every time. 
The connection for the Starlink Mini's power is also a nice tight waterproof connection. And it can also take the cold. It's even got a snow melt feature built in. I was camping in temps that got down into the 20s at night and it worked just fine. I never did get a chance to fully test out the snow melt feature because I'm kind of a wimp and I don't like camping in the snow. And it also does pretty dang good in hot temperatures. I was dumb enough to camp in Death Valley when it was over 107 degrees in the middle of summer. Out in the sun all day and it worked like a champ. Now one thing to keep in mind if you're going to mount it like I do inside your vehicle is that if you leave it running and the windows are up and that sun's baking your car's interior, it did get it hot enough to cause it to cycle power. But it didn't cause any permanent damage. Holy cow, that was a lot of talking. Hey, thanks for sticking with me. If you want to dig into anything in more detail, here's a link to my Starlink Mini playlist. If I didn't answer any of your questions, post them up in the comments. And if you found any of this helpful, let me know that as well. Until next time, enjoy the ride.